What is going on everyone and welcome back to my channel today I've got one of the most disgusting honestly entitled parent stories that I have read for a very long time I'm recording this intro after I've read it because I actually had to re-record the intro Such is the toxicity of this man in our first post pretty much this guy tries to buy a hundred handmade face masks from a disabled person for a ludicrously low amount of money. It's genuinely sickening guys without further ado. Let's get into this one Company demands 100 free fabric masks from a disabled, impoverished seamstress. For context, I'm the disabled, poor as F seamstress. I had to quit working at 30 years old due to severe, full body, complex regional pain syndrome, causing fatigue and extreme pain. I got housed on disability and live on $900 per month now. My mum, another seamstress who used to make wedding gowns, taught me how to sew as a kid and I love it. It's awesome getting to make things exactly how you want them. But my screwed up nerves aren't as fond of sewing. It can cause a good deal of pain if I sew for too long. It starts with the feeling of a cold yet burning gel slowly spreading from my shoulders down my back. And by the end, my leg can feel broken and my feet are on fire. It's a lot of fun. When COVID hit and they announced that fabric masks help, I said F the pain, it's worth it. And I began pumping out masks for family and friends, plus some neighbors. I gave away the first 30, but I started running out of the right supplies. And with money being so tight, I just couldn't afford more. So I asked people to donate $2 per mask if they were financially able to. Some people gave more, including my amazing neighbor, Nikki. Seriously, one of the best neighbors ever, a super sweet lady. Nikki began asking if I could make masks for her co-workers, and she took them and mailed them for me. Then, one day, Nikki texted me to ask if I'd be able to make 100 masks for a company. Apparently, someone who ended up with one of my masks loved it and owns a company with about 100 employees. He wanted to give each employee a mask. The business owner texted me to ask about the order. I said, sure, I can do it. It'll take me about one to two weeks as I work solo and I'm disabled. I'd want $5 per mask as this order is a huge one. I wanted some sort of profits. At that time, many mask sellers on sites like Etsy were charging upwards of $20 per mask. So my $5 one was dirt cheap. In the end, the business owner actually ghosted me. My nice neighbor, Nikki, finally got her friend, the business owner's wife, to admit that he found it ridiculous he was being charged more for a big order. The guy actually wanted them for $1 each. Oh yeah, and he felt four days were sufficient to sew them all. That would have meant killing myself, barely sleeping, and landing myself in a wheelchair for weeks while I recovered. All for the privilege of losing $100 myself on the order. It was heavily implied that as I'm disabled, I should have been grateful he was willing to pay at all. Oh my God. By now, I'm far more aware of what my services are worth. I donated, or sold at bare cost, the first 200 masks. Since then, I've begun selling on Etsy and have produced at least a further 200 masks since then. I'll never again consider a large order without both a slight markup and ample time. It's simply not worth it. Oh my god. Well, um, there are so many things that I just absolutely hate about this story. Uh, Jesus, I mean, the bit about, you know, it was heavily implied that because you're disabled OP, you should be grateful for any work at all. That That is genuinely disgusting. Like, that makes me feel sick. But overall, yeah, charging $1, trying to buy a mask for a dollar when you on your own OP are producing all of them, all 100. Like, what sort of business are you running? And how badly is it failing that you can't afford to pay $5? You can't, like, for a business of, of, I don't know, a reasonable size, the difference between $100 and $500 for, you know, something that is going towards your entire company's stuff, it's really not that big of a deal. Seriously, like, you should easily be paying at least $5. That's still a great chance cheap price given this person is making them on their own handmade each and every time it's just mental that someone would care so much with a few dollars a few hundred dollars when you have a business of over 100 people it is crazy what i just don't understand at all is how you can possibly run a successful business and have these principles of trying to scrimp on costs as much as, as much as possible and take advantage of people like this like seriously your staff are not going to enjoy working for you if this is how you act with them in the same way that you've acted with op it's a mad one like if you conduct business in this way trying to get the lowest possible costs the quality is not going to be good and you're going to get 
get bad products and you're going to give a bad service to your to your consumers. Like, I'm going off on one here. Overall, uh, this business owner is an absolute fraud. He's a dirty little rat bag. Let's move on. <laughs> Now moving on to our next post. Entitled mum and son yell at my sister for having a birthmark. A little backstory. This incident happened about three years ago when I was 10 years old and my sister was eight. I'm 13 now and my sister is 11. Even though I was only 10, I already knew that I wanted to be a lawyer. One of my relatives was in law enforcement during that time, so naturally I was interested in it because he showed me some stuff about it. So I was a skilled debater and I knew how to argue with someone and to have them back off from anyone. Anyway, I was at the mall with my family and my sister and I were sent to get the fast food at a fast food restaurant that we had ordered. Here is where this story happens. So my sister and I were walking to the pickup line to get the food we had ordered. Once we got there, we waited in the line for a good minute and a half when this woman and her kid walk up behind us. My sister and I, being the little kids we were, naturally turned around to look at who was behind us. We noticed a kid who walked up to my sister and stared at her birthmark on her forehead. That moronic kid then walks over to his mum, the entitled mum, and says, Mummy, what's that thing on the girl's forehead? The entitled mum then looks over and shrieks like a dog. By then, I'd already turned back around because I was bored. I have ADHD, so I was playing with my hands, but my sister hadn't. The shriek had startled her, so she turned around and poked me, and I noticed the entitled mum with a look of panic in her eyes. I asked this entitled mum, why are you staring at her like that? She looks at me and stutters. You, you, you know this girl? girl? No, I don't. That's why we're standing together in the line. I'd mastered the art of sarcasm by then. Legend. Um, of course I know her. She's my sister. Where are your parents? I need to talk to them. I was a little ticked off on how stupid this woman was. Somewhere in the food court. Why are you staring at my sister like that? She has a darker color of skin on her forehead. That's a bad influence to my kids. I proceed to walk in front of my sister to see what she was talking about. What the heck? That's a birthmark, you idiot. But this woman didn't get it. Obviously, she was very stupid. So I said, it's a birthmark? It's a mark you get on your body when you're born? That's why it's called birthmark. Birthmark. This is when the entitled kid goes, Mummy, that dark thing is scary. The entitled mum then says to me, well, it's obviously not if I've seen other people with it. Make her wipe it off. I go berserk. Are you a dim-witted idiot? Do you know what a birthmark is? Oh, wait, I forgot. Your brain capacity is too low to know what one is, much less to be able to understand what the dang word means. It's a birthmark for heck's sake. It's a natural mark people get on their skin. My dad had heard the commotion and started walking over to me to understand what was going on. The entire mum then started to say, Manager, I need a manager. This kid is harassing me and my child. Some employees had already been watching the scene and no one did anything. So the entire mum took matters into her own hands. Kid, you better get out of this store or I'm calling the manager. Go ahead. I knew I wouldn't get in trouble for anything because her claims were BS. She noticed that I was not leaving the store. At least she has eyes. Well, I know the owner. I'll call him and make you leave. She then makes a fake phone call. Then my dad showed up and started arguing with the lady. He then asked me why I was yelling, so I told him everything. He started screaming at the lady when she said again that I know the owner. But the owner was already there. And when the lady said it again, he said... Lady, who even are you? Why do you keep saying you know me? The entitled mum, knowing she was losing, threatened to call the cops. But my dad didn't care and told her to go ahead. She made the phone call and then ran away with her kids. We waited an hour for the cops to show up in case they wanted to question us, but they never did. All right, guys, comment down below. Do you think this story was real or made up? I actually know the answer. Um, so yeah, let me know down below if you think it was fictitious or completely real. I know what I would go for, but um, yeah, you know what? I'll leave a comment and in the pinned comment saying if it was real or not. So you're gonna have to go down and check anyway. But before you look at that, have in your mind what you're gonna comment, yeah? If it's real or fake, put story two dash real or story two dash fake, whatever you think. 
Um, and yeah, I'll be interested to see if the majority of you know or can work out what really happened in this situation. Yeah, let me know down below. Okay, let's move on. Now moving on to our final story. You don't wear a bra, you're grounded. Now, I'm not sure if this counts, but here you go. My parents are a special brand of stupid. This happened a few weeks ago, so bear with me. Oh, and also, I am a 16-year-old girl, and my mum is 43 years old. I was sitting in my room doing schoolwork when my mum came in. Now, in my room, I have my privacy. I wasn't in a Google Meet or anything or in class. I take online classes, so I wasn't wearing a bra. Now, because of my chest size, 38E, it's very noticeable when I'm not wearing a bra, unless I was wearing an oversized shirt, which I normally do even if I am wearing one. My mum came into my room and when she noticed that I wasn't wearing a bra, she began yelling at me, telling me I should be more of a lady. I kind of just sat there and stared at her before going back to my schoolwork. But she began to yell at me, even more for ignoring her, and slammed my computer shut, so I had to listen to her. I didn't even get a word in to tell her to leave me alone. She just said, From now on, if you don't wear a bra, you're grounded. Now, normally I do wear them, but mine are a little too small at the moment, and my parents keep putting me off to get new ones, so they're very uncomfortable to wear. I'm unsure if I'm complaining for no reason, or if my mum is just trying to find something new to yell at me for. Any advice? Yeah, I've got some advice for you, OP. Um, don't take any notice of what your stupid mum is telling you. If you don't want to wear a bra, it's not a legal requirement to wear a bra. Like, it's so stupid. You're in your own room, yeah? Why Why would your parents care what you're wearing first of all? It just, make, it just makes no sense to me. I wear what I want in my own room. I always have done and I always will. And no one will change that. So I don't understand. I mean, not just no one will change that. No one cares what I wear. Like how weird you have to be to go into someone's room and say, you know what? Can I just say that your fashion, your fashion sense is absolutely horrific. Can you put a bra on please? Because God, you look terrible. It's a strange one, isn't it? But I don't get it. It makes no sense. I imagine that the majority of you guys watching right now have no idea why this mum would care let alone mention something to her own daughter but you know it's a weird world we live in where parents ask their children to put bras on in their own rooms so weird so so weird yeah op advice is just do whatever you want and ignore your parents anyway guys that is gonna do it for this episode of r slash entitled parents don't go anywhere though click on this instead of clicking off my videos click on this yeah and watch all my other entitled parents videos because they're each one of them i've got to say and now i'm being really humble here but they are just absolutely incredible videos that you can't not watch now that i've said this you, you literally have to watch it because if you don't now click on this playlist you're going to be missing out on so much so much good content so you have to click it and if you don't click it i will hate you forever all right bye <laughs>